welcome to episode 166 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 27th of May. May. Nearly said March then. <laughs> Not a good start. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to show you all the things that I've been making in the last seven days and I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you. So today I have some knitting and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the things out of my make nine list which I've already completed for the year and show you some of the things that I want to make in the rest of the year as well um, as well as my current projects that I'm working on. I've got a little bit of sewing to show you. I haven't got a finished object but I've done quite a bit so I thought I might as well share it with you. I have a couple of questions from Ask Me Anything and I have a gadget that I'd like to share with you that I really enjoy using and lastly I've just got a bit of information on my shop update. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and you can find my website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles and crochet hooks, clover crochet hooks and bag making supplies such as fabrics and waddings etc. So we have a couple of bake-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and there are details in the description bar down below for that if you're interested in joining. One is on making a little bit of work on a project, it can be any craft, for 20 minutes a day and that's craft 20 a day and then we've got the spring shawl along 2021 and that runs till the end of June but there are more details in the description bar down below. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? So first of all I'm going to show you the finished blocked shawl that I did actually start to show you last week but I have now blocked it and you can see the drape on this is much better. Isn't that lovely? So somebody was asking me like, what exactly is blocking? So I've basically sewn the ends in of this shawl and then I've soaked it in a bowl of wool wash that you don't have to actually wash out and I use eucalan most of the time so I popped a little bit of eucalan in some warm water um, swished that around popped my knitted shawl in there left it for about 20 minutes or more doesn't matter and then I've gently squeezed the water out and you can either sort of wrap it up in a towel to absorb more of the moisture but I do have a, a spinner that I use for dyeing yarn so I spun the, the excess moisture out with that but if you haven't got one of those just wrap it up in a towel to get rid of the extra moisture and then I've pinned it out on a blocking mat um, you can use a towel as well, block it out on a towel just stretch it out to the shape and size that you want and then pin it there you can either use t-pins or there are various other sort of systems you can get blocking wires and those blocking um they're called blocks knit blockers from knit pro which i tend to use quite a lot you can use those as well leave it 24 hours maybe more depends on how warm the house is and whether it's going to dry when it's dry you can just unpin it and there we go and the drape on merino always just goes amazing when you've given it a bit of a block which i absolutely love and i did show this to you last week but i just thought i'd show you the difference with the drape after it's been blocked so there we go this is the six wives shawl and it is by potter and bloom and the yarns that I used are Lay Family yarn and it was a yarn that I'd got in my stash and I may have the label. I forgot to... I did have one skein of Lay Family yarns that I didn't actually have the label for but I have for this one. It's called Vintage China and it's on the 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon and it's 425 metres in 100 grams. So that's the Lay Family yarn is the main colour and then I've used a mini set from Curated Yarn Co and it's called Opulence um, to do the stripey bits and I just think that this is a lovely really lovely design of shawl it's really nice and simple and it shows off those stripes really nicely when you wear it like that i think um i think that's going to be one i go to quite a lot actually really looks really nice on i think um like i said last week it's sometimes you you knit a shawl and you're not quite really quite sure how to wear it or the design isn't shown off very well when you're actually wearing it but i think this one is really nicely because you can see those stripes right at the front so there we are that's one finished thing to show you so i've been knitting on my cozy memories blanket 
I did say last week that I'd have all 12 squares done, but I only managed to do six this week. And these are they. I think most of these are random minis out of my stash. And we have, I think this one is one of the Henny Penny Makes little mini set that I had that was five grams and it's 12 little minis of five grams. The rest are just little minis out of my stash, which I've got no idea what they are because they're sort of small five gram ones that I've got in a lovely big basket. I just delve in to, to um, add to my cosy memories blanket. So you can see how I've been going light, dark, light dark light dark roughly doesn't really matter um and i've got six more squares to do to finish this last row and then i will be doing an eye cord finish i'll quickly just hold up the rest of the blanket so you can see but it is difficult to sh sort of show each year um when I'm this close to the camera. I think when I finished it, what I'll do is I'll stand in the living room away from the camera so that you can actually see exactly how big it is. So there we go, that's my blanket. Um, I'm hoping to get those six squares finished by next week, but I doubt I'll get the eye cord done as well. So we shall see. I want to sort of spread it out a bit, otherwise I'll have only Cozy Memories blanket progress to show you, which is not good for a podcast, is it? <laughs> The second thing I've got to show you that I've been working on is a new cast on and it is one of my Make 9. That's why I thought I'd go through the Make 9 things that I've already completed um, at the end of this knitting section um, so that I can sort of tell you what projects that I'm going to do next as well. So this is going to be a pair of socks and look at this gorgeous cabled textured pattern there absolutely gorgeous and this is the French meringue socks by Marianne Heikkinen. Um hopefully I've not pronounced that too incorrectly and I'll pop links in the description bar down below anyway so you can find where I found the pattern on Ravelry and the yarn that I'm using is a West Green Loft Yarns and it was one of those 50 gram and 20 gram sock sets um, classic sock set in the 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon in the colourway Margot and Tara and it's these two colours so this one's the main colour and this is the contrast and I picked this up from Fibre East a couple of years ago now so I'm, I'm getting there slowly through the stash <laughs> and this side of the sock has got a lovely lovely cable pattern but actually the back of the sock is plain so you can probably see the colour of the yarn a little bit better on the back and there's some gorgeous gorgeous little speckly brown bits and corally pink really delicate corally pink in there so that's going to be the front of the foot and then we've got um the pattern goes all the way down the front of the foot as well so that's really lovely and i'm hoping to start the heel very soon i'm going to do quite short ones because they're going to be relatively summery um but isn't that gorgeous pattern and yarn just love it so that's what i've been working on and this is is on my make nine list so I'm going to show you some of the things I've already completed from my Make 9 list. So first of all is the um, Mary Margaret's Lace Tam. And this is knitted in Eden Cottage yarns in the Titus 4 ply base. And I love the lace on this. I did make some minor modifications to these triangle bits. Um, but I absolutely love this hat. Not that I've worn it very much because I haven't really left the house for <laughs> very much because of covid but ta-da and also i've not arranged it very well but you get the idea and it's a lovely drapey yarn because there's a silk content in this one so it's perfect for a tam because it drapes nicely on the back of the head so that was the first thing i have completed a pair of mittens and these are the mayfield mittens and they have the gorgeous colorwork bird and leaf um, design on the front and then sort of a geometric diamond um, pattern on the back and there's a design on the cuff as well so you can see that a little bit better so these mittens are knitted are knitted in Rauma Fenal Garn and I did find actually that I did go up um, to 2.5 millimeter needles and I did find that they are a little bit snug just at the bottom here so I would be tempted to go up to 2.75 just for the first 
couple of inches just so that it goes over my arm better but if you have got very slim arms you'll be absolutely fine um just because i've got a bit of um a bit of extra skin there shall we say <laughs> so those are finished and off my ticked off my make nine list and we have a cowl now so this cowl so this is the every bit cowl by stephanie lotvin and this is a gorgeous yarn by Cartrev and it's a DK weight yarn and there's quite a lot of um, it's quite thick yarn so I did end up casting off a little bit sooner than the instructions of the pattern did say but I think that's plenty of rib at the bottom I'm really happy with that and it's got some beautiful textured cables and lacy bits in this so I think this is going to get a lot of wear but I finished it just at the end of winter so I haven't really worn it very much yet um, but there we go Ta -da! <laughs> so that's the third one off my make nine list and the fourth one was my t-shirt I actually showed this on last week's podcast because I was using it as an example for the um, talking about mixing different yarn bases so this is the v back tee um there is a v neck but i'm actually i've knitted it so that i can wear the v at the front and it's by jamie hoffman and the three yarns that i used were a stranded dye works which is this top one here a hue loco which is this middle one and then i've got a hedgerow yarns which i used for the bottom and this is such a beautiful design it's a little bit complicated because you've got to sort of do some short rows to get the length um, equal at the front and the back but I did make some modifications to that because of my bust area and I was switching the V to the front instead of the back so I did omit one of the sections of short rows because I was going to wear it that way round to make it so that it was a bit longer at the front than the back so that I'd have more fabric to go over my bust area so in the end it's straight across the bottom so there we go Ta -da! so that's four things completed from my make nine and then i'm working on the socks as well so that's nearly five and then i've got four more to complete so on my list in addition to the ones that i've showed you and completed i have the wishes cardigan by hohi locatelli which has got some lovely drapey um uneven front which i think is really beautiful and then the Sparkle Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. It's just a nice, simple lace cardigan that I thought that would be nice to go over some of my dresses that I've been making. I have an acorn that I wanted to make for sort of autumn time, so that's why I haven't started that one yet. And that pattern is by Kim Hamlin. And then last but not least, I have the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along that he normally does in in sort of August time, I think, um, on my list, so that I can tick that off. Because quite often I'll put loads of things on my Make Nine, not include that, and then I've got loads more to, that I've got to achieve in the year. So I took a cheat <laughs> and put the Mystery Knit Along on there as well but who knows i might change my mind i haven't started the cardigans yet just because i can't quite make up my mind on the color and i do think that it's important to make a really carefully thought out decision when you make choices for colors for cardigans and things so that it'll fit in with other items in your wardrobe as well so there we are that is my knitting section for this week so now is the sewing section so last week i was talking about copying one of my t-shirts and here is what I've done so far. You can see that I've basically done the top bit and added the sleeves, but I've not hemmed the sleeves and I've not added the flancy bit around the middle. You can see that I've added the facing on the inside of the top. And I've also um, stitched around the outside of the facing just to hold it down. I think that helps the top sort of last a bit longer. I've overlocked around the edge of the facing before I stitched it in so that it would be a nice finished edge and the thread that I've used um, to stitch the facing down is a matching thread and I have attached a false placket and added some buttons on there so it isn't a real placket it doesn't open up but I thought that those buttons went pretty well with the fabric that I'd already got in my stash which is good so there we go. I showed this to my mum yesterday and she says, oh, is that a bit short? Cheeky. <laughs> 
So I'd still have to gather the fabric of the bottom panels and join that on and do a little bit of hemming. But I did finish off the neckline and added the buttons so that when I was actually sewing the buttons on and holding the material like this, it wasn't too sort of bulky to hold. And I did that before I added the sleeves as well. But um, if you didn't watch last week's episode, I'm basically taking a t-shirt that I've bought from a shop and it's very worn out so I thought I'd try and sort of copy it but by using the Agnes t-shirt by Tilly and the Buttons and making some modifications to it so I basically took the top part of the t-shirt and drafted myself a facing instead of using the neckband that you would normally with the Agnes t-shirt and then I sort of worked out where I wanted to chop it off and add a wider piece of fabric and gather it in so that it's a nice floaty bottom to it and I'm going to add that in for the next step. I love this fabric, it's a gorgeous fabric that I picked up from Sea Salt. Now Sea Salt I always thought was just a normal clothes shop but apparently for a while they did sell quite a bit of fabric but now I can't find any fabric on their website anymore so I think that they've stopped doing it. But this was what I picked up I think maybe last year when I bought quite a little bit of stash from there <laughs> and I wanted to start making these up into t-shirts that I can actually wear but I think this print is absolutely gorgeous and I'll just show you the back quickly but it's not particularly interesting <laughs> it's just the plain back of the neck and I can't wait to show you the bottom bit of the top and see how it looks on so next week hopefully I'll have it finished and I'll have Barbara display it for you properly <laughs> so that is my sewing for today but I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. So you can ask away on the Ravelry thread, which is called Ask Me Anything thread, or if you don't use Ravelry, feel free to just email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and I will try to answer it on the podcast. So first question is from Rachel, and Rachel says, Do I ever knit or crochet in bed? Now I do sometimes, but actually it's really quite rare. So I tend to, when I get up in the morning, I'm always thinking, ooh, I've got what have I got to do today? Or if it's the weekend, I'm thinking, ooh, what can I make? <laughs> what can I start on myself? So I'm normally excited to sort of start sewing, really. I find that knitting and crochet for me is a really sort of relaxing time in the evening. And I think that if, I, if I'm gone to bed, I'm too shattered to be knitting normally. <laughs> So I normally sit and knit or crochet in the evenings in front of the telly on the sofa. So the next question is from Robin and they were asking when they're working on the cosy memories blanket they were thinking about backing theirs and have I seen this done? To be honest I've never seen anyone back a cosy memories blanket but I have thought about it myself. I thought about um, lining it with sort of fleece on the back to make it really really thick but I was worried about it shifting as I was sewing it. I think if you're an experienced quilter you might be okay um, actually sewing it together like quilting it properly but I think that there's going to be quite a lot of shifting because there's different yarns on the front of the panel so they have different tendencies to stretch differently and also it depends on the fabric that you're going to back it with um, so you'd need to use a walking foot and be really careful of how you stitched it but then Robin suggested that what she thought she might do is attach fabric to the I-cord edge around the edge of the blanket and then tack different areas throughout and I think that that is a really good idea because you're not going to get yourself in a pickle so much. You've, if you've already sewn around the edge you've just got to keep it nice and flat and you can just sew little areas down. I think it'd probably be best as well to, if you hand sewed it just to make life a lot easier. <laughs> you could do that old fashioned sort of type of quilting where you do little tufts of yarn I suppose and have the ends sticking out the front like a little tassel if you're into that sort of thing. But I definitely think that's a really good idea Robin rather than trying to quilt the whole thing because I think that would be, get very frustrating. <laughs> but I think it'd be really nice and thick afterwards. 
I think when I first started my Cozy Memories blanket, I thought, oh, it doesn't feel very thick here. But actually, when I've knitted a lot of it, I do feel that it's actually warmer than I thought it would be with, when I've got it on myself. Although, obviously, when I've been working on it lately, it's not been quite as cold as it would have been in the winter. But I, I think I'm always knitting on blankets and things, so I can always layer up with another quilt as well, or another knitted or crocheted blanket. So there we go, that's on my Ask Me Anything section. But I do have a gadget for this week. I don't always have gadgets these days just because I've run out of new things that I want to share with you. Perhaps I should recycle some of the items that I really find useful so that those newer viewers get to see some of those gadgets that I think are really, really helpful. But I did find this, and I don't think I've shown it on the podcast before, and that's Freycheck. This is probably an older bottle, so it might look a little bit different to this if you ordered some. But it's basically a liquid, and you have a little lid there that you can unscrew. And it has a little tube as an applicator to put on fabric that might fray. So I especially like using this for buttonholes. So if you're making a piece of clothing and you've got a buttonhole in there, you're going to be undoing and doing up that button a lot. It's a good idea to use some of this on the buttonhole so that the buttonhole lasts longer really and I definitely think it does so I always use this on buttonholes on clothing especially um, just because it makes it last a little bit longer so there we go that's another little item that I like to use in my crafting so last of all I've just got the shop update section so just a reminder that the June clubs are now available on my website so these are June yarn clubs and you can either choose the music from the movies sock sets or the mini sets which are the mixtape minis and they're available in a number of different bases so those will be available on the website until the 6th of June and I will be shipping the June yarn clubs on the 18th of June and lastly, I just wanted to remind everybody that advent calendars for this year will be out on the 1st of August in my shop. I think a lot of shops have already got theirs out or they released theirs earlier in the year, but I like to keep mine to the 1st of August so that you have time to save up. There are some details on my website about the advents um, but they do range in price from sort of 36 pounds to 110 pounds depending on your budget and there are more details on the website so i'll leave a link in the description bar down below if you want to know more and also if you have any questions don't hesitate to give me an email on crafthousemagic at gmail.com so that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you on the next episode bye